everyone, it's Lizzie. First of all, apologies if I sound a little strange today. I am not feeling so well, so yeah, apologies for that. Today I thought I'd just sit down and have a bit of a biddle. That's a bit and a little. A little chat just between me and my camera, you guys. Uh, because I haven't done that since before I went to America. See, it's a bit more casual. I've brought my coffee along. There's not much left, but I'm still drinking it. Lipstick stain. What a work of art. Something that I have been really happy to see lately has been the fact that there are a lot more people who talk about mental health. I think that this is a really... it's a really big deal. It's really important that we do talk about it because, as I've mentioned before, mental health has this stigma about it where, you know, it shouldn't be talked about and it's something that's either shunned because if you've got mental problems then you're mentally unstable, you're mentally ill and you're a crazy person. That's far from the truth. More often than not, adolescents or young adults will suffer from some kind of mental illness. I find it's really good because the more people talk about mental health, mental illnesses, they seem to be talking about it in a really positive way. And it's more just to raise awareness than anything and share their stories and say how they're coping, how they're not coping. And a big part of that then in turn will bring about more people talking about it, which will raise the awareness and hopefully just rewrite the stigma that surrounds mental health and that would be really good to see that change. A little while ago, I made a video called Anxiety, Panic Attacks and Mental Health. And I spoke about how I suffer from anxiety, both general anxiety and social anxiety, as well as some panic attacks. Because I want to be part of this good change and bring about the downfall of the stigma surrounding mental health, I feel like Today is the day that I am going to talk to you about my depression. I guess part of the reason is because I still have a bit of a stigma with my own depression that uh, it sounds scary. And to be honest, it is kind of scary because you can't physically see the impact that it's having. You can try to describe it and you can certainly feel it, but it's not like a broken leg. And I mean, yes, that is with all mental illness, but maybe it's because I can understand my anxiety better and that's something that I am learning to control. I am getting better at that. The depression, however, is something that comes out of nowhere and it can cling on for days, weeks, months, and I don't know where it comes from. And to me, that's scary. So. I'm making this video to say that I'm not okay. And I mean, I'm telling people that I'm okay because I'm not great and I'm not good. But if I were worse, I wouldn't be able to get up and put makeup on, let alone decide to sit down and film a video. So I guess what I should be saying is that I'm getting bad again. I don't know how to stop it. I don't know how to help slow it down. Some people, when they find that they're struggling in life, are able to reach out to other people. Uh, they might reach out with one arm or two arms, or they might be like an octopus and reach out with all these different arms and say, hey, I'm not doing so well. Can we chat? Can we catch up? Do you want to come over? I'm not one of those people. <laughs> I'm the person who retreats into themselves, into their room, into their bed. And instead of asking for people for help, I look to books movies and music to find my comfort and just I just retreat there I don't go out and I don't do things I will still sometimes go out and get coffee otherwise some very lovely people in my life will bring me coffee and they have to check if I'm eating if I've had anything to eat for the whole day if I'm sleeping properly for me a great achievement the other day was taking washing and doing three loads of washing but that was all I did for the day. That was all I could summon energy to do. For me, I guess, one of the best ways to describe what the depression feels like right now is that it feels like I have a really fuzzy head. That's how I describe it. It's like there is this cloud over my head and everything's kind of a bit blurry, a bit hard, it's a bit foggy 
for me to get through, for me to think through, and everything's just so tiring. I think I get really overwhelmed when I get an inundation of messages and social media contacts. And the thing that I will end up doing is ignoring them. And I feel really bad because I am really lucky to have people in my life who are reaching out to me to try and talk to me because they care about me. And I will get back to them later, of course, because um, I don't just ignore them for good. I've turned off all notifications on my phone. That is one of my coping mechanisms. I also understand that I could be offending some people by not replying straight away. And I do feel bad about that. I honestly do. But for me, retreating into myself and cutting myself off a little bit like that and turning to my books, movies and music, it's my way of putting me first. It's my way of looking after myself. I honestly think that I am a genuinely caring and nurturing person. I tend to put others before myself, which I really value about myself, to be honest. It's one of the things I like best about me. But it can also have its downfall. And all of a sudden, the stress hits me. And the fact that I'm not putting myself first or thinking about myself as number one, I'm sick and I'm stressed out and I'm not getting out of bed and I'm sleeping too much and I'm, I'm not meeting people when I'm supposed to and all of these things fall back into this bad, bad routine that I have and I don't like it. So for me, turning off those notifications, not instantly replying to everything, uh, not editing all of my VidCon and America vlogs, even though I really, really want to because I like them so much. But if I put that stress on myself, it's not going to help me get better. So I am taking this time to focus on me and to try and slowly work back to something more positive, a happier place, something that is okay. So basically I wanted to sit down and have this chat today because I think that I share a lot of myself on my YouTube channel and if I'm going to be my true honest self, that's also sharing the bad side. The days when I can't do things, the weeks when I can't do things. And I hope that somewhere it could help someone feel a little less alone. And if I tell myself that so many other people have it worse than me, that's not going to be any good for me. I have to validate the way that I'm feeling and tell myself that it's okay to not be okay and it's okay to put myself first and look after myself. So if that's something you need to hear as well, I hope you're hearing it loud and clear. Just put yourself first, say no to someone for something that you feel is stressing you out that isn't essential for you to be doing. It's perfectly okay to look after yourself I am going to finish this video like always. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I am being a bit slow on the videos at the moment, but I have a lot of videos to share with you guys and I hope you're looking forward to them. Please leave me any comments, whether it's advice or questions, because as always, I read through them all and I enjoy getting comments a lot. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I see you again in another video. Bye!